Okay, uh, not used to talking through a mic, so. Um, hello and welcome again to Mass. Uh, my name is Sarah Semi, and I currently study chemical engineering, but I've been a part of the Mass Alexandria study, study program for the last two years. Uh, I was also one of the students who had the opportunity to travel to Castle to visit Documenta and work closely with some of the artists there. And uh, it was really a very uh, interesting experience, uh, a bit overwhelming, to say the least. Um, I'm really glad that you all made it to Alexandria, and I hope you can tolerate the weather and enjoy your time. Um, and now I would like to introduce our next speaker, Alexei Benzen, whose talk today is entitled Sleeping Politically. Alexei is a philosopher and a researcher at the Russian Academy of Science in Moscow. He's also a contributing author to journals on philosophy, theory, the humanities in Russia and abroad. His major fields of interest include theories of subjectivity in modern philosophy and political thought, post-Soviet, post-colonial dimension, and the philosophy of art. He's also a member of the interdisciplinary group Shtu Delat, What is to be Done, uh, which was founded in early 2003, which is a platform founded in early 2003 with the goal of merging political theory, art, and activism. Um, I'm really excited about your talk and... Oh, okay. I will try to be short with my things, though uh, they are enormous. Uh, and I feel, uh, how to say, very excited, though, how to say, excited at the same time tired uh, because of long way here from a country with different climate, uh, as you can guess, uh, and so on. So I am happy to, to, to be here and I'm happy probably to provoke some further further uh, conversation, discussions, and so on. So I, I also agree on position on pure instrument for further, further, further uh, discussions and so on. So I just, uh, 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 I, I, I actually published uh, with the uh, framework of the comment a short essay which somehow condense uh, my long-term research uh, about uh, political and existential aspects of sleep. Uh, it was started like seven years ago, quite a long time ago. So, uh, but here, of course, I, I don't like to, re how to say, retell, uh, repeat this text, but uh, just try to unpack uh, probably some, mo in more personal way, some of the problem which I work with. Uh, so it kind of work in progress. Uh, and I will try to share what I think now about this uh, and so on. And, and uh, uh, to start with, uh, with this title, which uh, seems playful, uh, Sleeping Politically, which is uh, some, somehow uh, uh, refers to a kind of uh, experience of the group of uh, what is to be done, uh, uh, to which I belong, it is a group of uh, intellectuals, artists, uh, uh, activists, uh, which uh, exists since 2003, four and 2004, it was period of formation of the group, uh, exists uh, already eight years, and uh, and at, at some point we had experience of organizing so-called seminar communes. Uh, we just decided to think about. Uh, how to say, to, um, to destroy these borders between uh, uh, academic seminars and uh, political meetings. Uh, so we're thinking uh, about the experience of uh, living together uh, to produce kind of new, f how to say, the tr trained, trained term now, n new forms of life together. So the idea was that we meet like for two days uh, and uh, in one space, like art center or somewhere else, and we uh, share uh, our time together totally, not going to nice hotel after talks uh, and, uh, and, and, and so on, but just live together like two, uh, like 40, 48 hours, uh, eating together, drinking, discussing, uh, uh, and we were sleeping several times in one and the same room. For example, I remember in Porta, in Survalish Museum, we were sleeping on the stage of theater, which was uh, a part of this museum. So it was a lot of uh, such uh, experiences uh, with, uh, uh, with some practice of, uh, practice of uh, common uh, living together. So, but uh, then after, uh, probably you heard that in Russia we have uh, uh, quite strong protest movement uh, against uh, 
and this ruling elite headed by uh, P P Putin. And we, last time we got a more open form of it. So as, uh, like occupation, like uh, occupying parks uh, and also spending time together, sleeping and living, sleeping, sleeping in these spaces, occupied spaces too. So for me, it was a kind of anticipation uh, that, that, that what's happening now in Russia. So, so in a way, I feel that there is some connections between these practices too. So be, because we, when we did it like three years ago, it, we, we are we're living in totally apolitical country. E, when people were like again like to play with these metaf metaphorical uh, registers of sleep, were like sleeping politically. So, so <laughs> in this uh, sense of term. And for example, at uh, one of the seminars, which was at f actually at first seminar. Uh, it was in Russian pr province. Uh, 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 all the seminar war was arrested. So it was uh, uh, because of we have some uh, uh, nice new structure which is parallel to uh, traditional Ministry of Interior. They called anti-extremist centers, and they established these centers in each city. So uh, they were spying for activists, for uh, active people, and finally, uh, when we were. A screening uh, Gadar movie one plus one. It was a seminar about uh, politics, art, uh, thinking, and uh, special police uh, intrude to the to, uh, intervened to the room, and we were put to the wall like this. And uh, uh, at the, the end, uh, this uh, 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 screening of Gadar movie was interrupted. But then, after we spent several hours in police station, we returned, so we continued the seminar. So it was possible because we, they were trying to read a newspaper which we published uh, called Что делает, but uh, with references to contemporary philosophy theory, and they were not able to understand what it is about and what is uh, extremist uh, what is what is uh, what kind of extremism we represent so so finally we were re released so i mean that uh, uh, this uh, practice was quite it's quite kind of bi biographical moment or uh, but it was quite formative for, uh, for my uh, thinking on sleep and uh, kind of uh, living together being together so uh, and we organized after that in more safer spaces like Van Eyck Academy in Maastricht or some in Porto, uh, kind of this seminar, but of course without this, uh, how to say, dense relation with police because in uh, different contexts it's not so much working. So, uh, and one of the seminars was also called uh, Living Politically. So I just uh, referred to this as a one in interesting, at least for me, context uh, for my research. Uh, and to continue this uh, introductory, introductory notes, uh, uh, mm, uh, I, I would say that also uh, the project itself was a kind of uh, mm, not just theoretical, uh, not just theoretic theoretical uh, research, but also a kind of also a form of living, uh, because uh, uh, during this quite long time I met a lot of people from different parts of the world which were doing something in the same direction, uh, not just uh, philosophers of, or theorists, uh, but also artists, for example. For example, recently I met an artist from France whose name is uh, Virgil Novarina, and he does a, a, a very interesting uh, art practice uh, which uh, connected with work with working with this sleep and sleeping body, and uh, uh, it started when he said uh, when we, he was quite young and he said I am 22 and seven years from this time I spent in, in sleep. So he's uh, so I uh, he says that I I don't know I know nothing about these seven years of my life on myself. So for him it was a beginning of. Uh, uh, special art practice when he tried to fix uh, uh, not just his dreams uh, through artistic media like uh, I don't know like, like pictures like writing or something but he tried to fix this state uh, uh, this part of sleep which contains no dreams so his idea was not just uh, this typical surrealist practice uh, playing with dreams or dream materials but trying to fix the moment when we don't see when, when see nothing in our sleep so it was his idea and uh, from uh, at the beginning he's starting to uh, practice this uh, memorizing his dreams writing them or picturing them but then after he forget 
he had forgotten this practice and started to memorize the moment of this darkness in sleep. The strange, uh, strange practice, uh, memorizing the moment of we don't see uh, anything. We are existing in a very specific mode uh, as if we are not existing at all. I mean, in terms of ego, in terms of our subjectivity and so on. So he uh, uh, f uh, finished in, uh, uh, not finished, but still continued this practice and has a huge ar archive. Uh, uh, so now he's around 30, 37, I think. So he has a huge archive of these representations of sleep. And it was, for me, it was a pure happiness to meet such a person which so purely responds uh, to my uh, intentions, to my, uh, how to say, initial ideas connecting sleep. So uh, as, as uh, uh, as uh, was uh, already said, uh, Chu said this, that uh, usually in art, in, uh, in literature, we have some experience or attempt to fix some experience of dream, but usually we don't have any attempts to, to describe or think through this very weak and e even, how to say, uh, uh, disappearing experience of sleep. So for me, it was very interesting to, to meet such It was a lot of such, <coughs> such uh, encounters. Or for example, with anthropologists who studied the sleep of uh, uh, homeless people. It was very, also very important to, because if, as you can guess, those who don't have, don't, don't have an apartment or house, they, uh, their conditions of sleep is very bad and they are permanently disturbed by noise of the street, by your body is not safe, you're permanently disturbed and so they are, are in permanent, uh, how to say, uh, position of oscillation between sleep and wakeful state. So it's quite a horrible condition when you are exposed on the street like this. Or refugees, for example, there is such researchers of uh, sleep of refugees in these camps for, for refugees. So it's, it's, so I, I, I think it just, I just tried to map uh, this uh, through some example, examples, uh, the, the whole field which I tried to work uh, in. Uh, and also I think important was uh, uh, this uh, social condition of uh, extreme neoliberalism, uh, which uh, was introduced in all in ma most of post-communist countries like um, uh, like Russia, like some parts of Eastern Europe, which uh, which uh, how to say uh, connected with uh, what economists calls deregulation. With all structures of everyday life was uh, deregulated, shifted, transformed and so on, starting from regulation of market uh, to uh, regulations of forms of life, uh, of practices, everyday practices, and so on. So for post-Soviet uh, uh, context, it was also, uh, how to say, very important to um, this experience because it started uh, actually uh, in 90s from so-called economic shock therapy when uh, uh, previous social institutes, uh, was, they were destroyed, Institute of Protection, Institute of Social Security were destroyed and people were somehow in very anomic condition, in condition of anomia, which really disturbed many rhythms, uh, many, how to say, many figures of uh, everyday life. Uh, and it was also explosion of kind of bohemian way of life, uh, kind of not just artists, but um, the whole milieu in Mos Moscow and uh, other cities was connected with this practicing nightlife, Night, uh, it was uh, established the whole industry of night, nightlife in 90s. And, and one of the, for example, one of the journal uh, jour magazines uh, uh, about uh, this uh, nightlife was called Don't Sleep, like you should not sleep. So, so for me, I think it was also important this kind of social uh, reference, uh, as, uh, which uh, at the same time connected with global universal process of implementation, these neoliberal policies in different contexts, of course very differently, but I think that in uh, my context it was quite tremendous, it was quite, uh, quite uh, sh strong in terms of shifting previous forms of life. Uh, uh, or, for example, this time I remember also an anecdote what, which was very popular uh, when one guy posted, uh, it was the end of 2000 when uh, internet was already somehow functioning uh, as alternative social network, 
uh, who wrote that uh, how you can sleep in this country with totally captured and grasped but new nourish and oligarch so you cannot sleep at all in these conditions so so it was quite uh, quite popular joke uh, this time uh, but generally again to if to tell it more <coughs> in more scientific academic terms. It was also a universal process which, which is connected of, with establishing uh, through different uh, technological means uh, what uh, sociologists call 24-hour society. It means that uh, uh, all structures of such, such society, they function independently from these biological rhythms of sleep and awakening day and night, for example, uh, media, uh, social services, police, uh, 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 many social, social institutions work uh, incessantly without interruption. So it was also the process which was uh, consolidated in uh, last uh, 20, 30 years. And was also, co also connected with this uh, advance of <coughs> neoliberalism. So, uh, and so, so it was a lot of uh, impulses for me to think about how this social and uh, economic social change uh, problematized sleep itself. So f before it was quite natural, uh, naturally inscribed in life of society. Now it was problematized because it was not, uh, uh, how to say, naturally uh, regulated. So it was uh, some problematic element of uh, life, sleep itself. So you can, for example, you can, you can deprive your sleeping for writing more text or spending more, more time in nightclub and so So sleep becomes a, a very problematic part of, uh, of life itself because it's not, in, uh, not fits uh, the demands of uh, this uh, uh, hyper-rationalist, hyper, uh, totally <coughs> based on principle of effic eff efficiencies uh, and pragmatism uh, and so on, society, I mean, based on uh, this principle of pragmatism, pragmatism, efficiency, and so on. So, so sleep somehow is socially problematized, socially, politically, economically problematized in this society. So it's like uh, kind of just trying to contextualize what I was, uh, how it, what uh, uh, these preconditions of uh, my research. Uh, and also, uh, for example, it was <coughs> uh, mentioned here that uh, uh, in, uh, uh, I, I read it in this uh, f description of the seminar that in Russian uh, language there is no clear distinction between sleep and dream. It's not true. Uh, uh, sorry, b b because uh, as in many languages like sleep, uh, dream, uh, schlaf, traum, like same, uh, rev, uh, in Russian also there is this distinctive term uh, which could be translated like vision in sleep, like you vi see something during your sleep. So it's, you should not uh, <laughs> exoticize different languages. But, but generally uh, there is sleep, uh, term sleep could, could designate both uh, both uh, sleep and dream. So there is such point. So probably this, how to say, uh, this uh, mixture was also somehow productive for thinking about this uh, in Russian language. So, uh, uh, and generally, to, it's kind of my first introductory part to this uh, discussion of sleep, but generally I I would like also to say, to say something about my basic uh, <coughs> uh, philosophical and political orientation in concerning this research. So, uh, so f uh, and about the, how to say, what, how I see this research generally, taking as topic sleep. For, for first, uh, I already said about these many symptoms uh, connected with sleep, this 24-hour society, this deregulation of sleep, this problematization of sleep, and so on. So for me, first, uh, sleep is a, these problems with sleep, like uh, in very practical terms, like insomnia, which became very widespread social, socially last many, uh, like, like, like a century already, I think. So uh, for me, it was... Uh, uh, it was a very important symptom of, uh, of our contemporary time, of contemporaneity. So I hope uh, in my research to give some diag diagnosis, to give some diagnostics for this contemporary moment from this quite 
quite specific angle of sleep and its, it's, its problematization in contemporary society and politics. Uh, um, in more, uh, generally I think that uh, to use Foucault term problematization that uh, anthropologically we can say that humans are, uh, how to say, the, the, uh, the creatures of problematization. They usually problematize uh, themselves or, or the external worlds and sometimes uh, make just problems for other animals. So I think uh, generally this term could be used uh, in more broad context of anthropo philosophical anthropology. Uh, and uh, uh, so for me, it's important how historically, philosophically, uh, politically, sleep became a problem, mm. not just the problem of insomnia. And for example, the same social sciences, uh, they now, uh, so there is some interesting progressive research in, in uh, field anthropology and sociology, and many mm, theorists and researchers say that uh, the, the whole uh, Theori ground for theorizing in social sciences is experience of the day, not experience of the night. It's experience of wakeful consciousness, not experience of sleep. So, and they even introduced the uh, term day centrism from, from the word day and centrism like centration of day experience. So, because the most of sociologists, social, social sciences, they are based on these assumptions of uh, day, daily life, like visual contact, like vi seeing each other, touching, and, uh, and, and so on and so on. So I think it's similarly, we could say that uh, uh, philosophy also, and what, we, what we know as classical philosophy, what we know as uh, philosophy, which one could call called metaphysics, is also based on paradigm of wakeful, non-sleeping subject. So, uh, and and moreover, uh, philosophy uh, since ancient time trying to wake up people, try try to convert them to a different way of life, more philosophical, and wake up them to different, new, more meaningful life. So if, for example, you uh, take example of Socratus, Socratus, which was described in, for example, in his uh, apology, which uh, we know from Plato, and he was comparing himself with mos mosquito, who are permanently biting people and make, uh, make, uh, wake them up by this, involving, them, involving uh, people in dialogue and uh, trying to shift or to criticize the uh, primitive daily opinions, to, to bring them to more higher level of consciousness, wake them up. So I think in a way it's kind of maybe too ambitious uh, project to somehow challenge and deconstruct uh, this philosophical paradigm of waking up. I would call it, I don't know, I'm not native English speaker as you see, so I think it would be correct uh, to say this wake-upism of uh, philosophy, kind of this. So because it's permanently addressed to this uh, bring, making people up, making pe people uh, wake up. So for me it was a very, as well as religion, by the way, because it uh, was also at least what we call uh, monotheist religions, like religions of book, uh, Christianity, Islam, I think, I, I'm not expert in Islam, but uh, I think it works similarly uh, in terms of uh, waking people up for different life. It's also this whole model that is operative in religion too, I think, but, but of course they are a little bit different from philosophical one. So for me, it's uh, interesting not just to say, let introduce a kind of new sleepism or something in uh, discourse, but let's just, uh, how to say, deconstruct this hidden uh, presupposition of philosophical discourse and to see what will happen, what we politically, I don't know, philosophically and so on. So it could be my, uh, how to say, ambition uh, during this uh, research. Uh, uh, but uh, and in this sense, I am on the side of uh, how to say experimental way of thinking, which was somehow established, for example, in post-war French philosophy, uh, which we know in uh, many radical currents of thought, critical currents of thought. And actually, uh, I think it also was uh, 
how to say, somehow related to my context because I think that uh, one of the important part of introduction of this kind of experimental thinking, uh, connecting politics, philosophy, and political act was, of course, uh, Lenin, who was uh, very pejorative about professional university philosophers and saying that, that they are kind of... Uh, PhD like case of bourgeoisie. So, I, no, no, I'm just mostly joking, but uh, just um, to, 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 to give you a sense of, of uh, what I think about this. And so, uh, in a way, I think uh, uh, I f uh, feel very attached to this line of thought, which is, could be quite different, quite wild, uh, but at the same time, uh, sometimes productive. So it's another preliminary for 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 this, and generally, uh, um, uh, just to give several more examples, I think just to give uh, because in the end, I think I will show you several just random pictures from artwork, artworks, and also from uh, some just media pictures uh, connected to this representation of sleep or of sleeping body. Uh, and I think uh, uh, I, will be, I will do it in the end of my lecture, but now I just, uh, several, another uh, quite interesting examples of uh, politicizing or political, political uh, relevance of sleep. For example, one of the, my favorite examples is uh, a story about China and Mao, uh, which was connected with, uh, after uh, uh, Mao came to power, he introduced a special law which was uh, uh, addressed to uh, improving well-being of workers and it was uh, establishing uh, day, day, uh, uh, sleep time for worker, worker, workers during uh, daytime. So it was a kind of siesta uh, which was uh, uh, legalized, uh, authorized by special law. And it was, <coughs> of course, uh, Chinese working, uh, workers was, uh, they were welcoming this, uh, this uh, uh, habit of day, day sleeping. And, but finally, uh, in the 70s, uh, when China started to turn more and more to, how to say, reforms or this kind of more ca capitalistic uh, uh, pro or proto-capitalistic uh, economies, uh, it, it somehow it started to react on criticism of uh, uh, orientalistic criticism of China, saying that look, they are sleeping three hours uh, during the day, so that's why uh, the efficiency of Chinese economy is not so high. Not, not now. It was at 70, so now we know that it's quite. Uh, and they reduced uh, reduced this after a discussion which was continued 10 years in all national press of China. It was very ceremonial discussion of question of sleep in all first pages of Chinese newspapers. Uh, it was, uh, this uh, law was uh, abolished and uh, it was uh, introduced like one hour break or something. So actually the same pro process, uh, uh, probably, uh, at least I read, read this, was somehow connected in some countries which has uh, this uh, Mm, this practice of siesta. So I heard that in Spain, this in 2000 was also reduced. Uh, some, somehow it was uh, some, some, somehow reduced uh, under pressure of this neoliberal economics of efficiency, productivity, and so on. So it just just to, to, to give you example how sleep could be immediately politicized, uh, how, it, how it could be immediately uh, became a question of politics uh, and political discussion. So, uh, it's one example. It, it is a question of regulation of sleep time, which I will go further uh, in la uh, later con uh, consequential part of my presentation. Uh, or we have uh, some uh, a very active uh, usage of figure of sleep in political speeches. Again, this wake upism, like wake up, uh, be political, mobilize, and so on and so on. So it's very often figure. And for example, during the Russian, uh, recent Russian protest was very popular slogans. Now just thousand have awakened because demonstration was like 
100,000 as, as maximum, but, but tomorrow millions will wake up too. So it was quite a popular slogan dur during uh, the, the, this demonstration as a kind of um, metaphor for uh, uh, this process of politicization of people. It's just a different angle. Or we different angle of this sleep in terms of social and political. Or we have, uh, for example, um, uh, so-called uh, uh, more mi micro uh, things like uh, introducing a new devices for controlling sleep duration. For example, you probably you know that uh, there is a special program on iPhone which wake you up uh, in special period of time, having this connection to your body, to the rhythm of your breathing, and so on and so on. So there is a similar devices now for drivers. That's like a ring. When and when you, the just student told me this story. I just uh, some some young student which were being part of my seminar. So so it was uh, like a special ring for your hand and when you are getting sleepy like me now, so it gives you an, an impulse to, to wake you up. So there is new devices of such kind and they are very popular among drivers who are uh, going to long distances, for example. So it's also, so, so we are now have some level of technology, which uh, biotechnology, which connected with uh, the whole structure of and rhythms of uh, functioning of your body and give you these micro devices for regulating and controlling uh, your sleep. I don't tell, of course, about long history of, of, of pharmacy drugs, uh, which gives you sleeping pills, which gives you a feeling of control of your sleep. So it's also one of these, uh, I think, important symptoms for uh, 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 for my perspective of seeing sleep in this uh, perspective of uh, uh, this uh, control and, or regulation, uh, which has d different uh, new meaning. Yeah, and uh, uh, so, uh, so I, I, I would say, and also finally, uh, finally several, uh, uh, several words uh, about uh, uh, this uh, mm, polit politicization of sleep in, in more purely political political sense. For example, uh, when uh, uh, so, so I mean the, this idea of uh, sleep as being far uh, m most distant from what we call the politics, because of course politics. Uh, uh, is the stereotypical representation of politics is, uh, uh, is uh, active people on the street, they demand something, they are wakeful of course, they are uh, able to fight with police and so on and so on. And uh, when you see sleeping sleeping person, it could be also strange to, in terms of uh, uh, how these realities, uh, politics in this sense and uh, the political in sleep could, could be correlated. So. Uh, so my idea was to go deeper beyond these cases and beyond this general consideration of what could be my project in terms of uh, philosophical anthropology or in terms of uh, I don't know, uh, political science, but uh, to, to go deeper and to think uh, on sleep, uh, not as political metaphor, uh, to think on sleep not as a metaphor which, which people use or as a kind of object which uh, is regulated by new devices of control, by new technologies and so on. But uh, to go deeper and uh, to see connections of sleep and what we call, it's more uh, how to say, profound level, what we call modernity or what we call capitalist modernity. So it's more, I go to more systematic way of, uh, <coughs> of um, uh, uh, theorizing about sleep. So, so first I, I would say that all my <clears throat> research is, uh, revolves around three uh, interconnected uh, hypotheses. Uh, first is uh, that, uh, which is already more or less clear from I w was saying before, first uh, hypothesis would sound like sleep uh, influenced and transformed, transformed in capitalist modernity. And uh, this, uh, uh, and it, it's, uh, so it was transformed uh, by new social order which was introduced by capitalism. It was somehow 
uh, in recent years, it was somehow te technologically controlled and so on and so on. What, what usually in different contexts we, uh, people call biopolitics, this politics which is addressed to living body of individual or the whole population. So, and at the same time, more distinctive and more interesting thing which I see here, it is not just sleep, uh, this transformation of sleep was uh, outcome, a result of this pro process of ca capitalist modernization and modernity, this introduction, these capitalist uh, uh, institutions, uh, capi uh, capitalist uh, wage li labor uh, relation to capital and transformation to whole social life, but uh, deprivation of sleep itself became a constitutive moment in this modernity. And I will try to mm, to show how. Uh, so this, uh, but just to, to say it in very briefly that uh, it was, uh, I'd say the basic structures of modern power, how for example Foucault described, or not just Foucault, but for example Norbert Elias or some other so social scholars who was doing in the same lines uh, as, a uh, as a machinery of uh, control and observation was based on this instance of non-sleeping power, of non-sleepless power. So for me, I think it's very important uh, condition sleep, this transformation of sleep was very important condition of modernity. So it's first thesis or first hypothesis. Second one is, uh, uh, mm, uh, I, I'm not sure that I will have time enough to discuss this in terms of history of philosophy because I have kind of chapter or part of my text connected with a kind of genealogy of thinking about sleep since Plato, Aristotle to Kant, Hegel and contemporary thinkers. But just summarize very briefly, uh, it was based on some point uh, of exclusion of sleep, or based on negative model of uh, treating sleep, thinking about sleep as a lack, er, as a detachment from rationality, as a some absence of subjectivity and so on and so on. So, and, uh, uh, but there is at the same time distinctive sub hypothesis that uh, there is some positive line of understanding of sleep in this, uh, which I also try to, 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 uh, to follow, to uh, trace, and so on. So, and this model of sleep is very relevant for today, especially in art, especially in think imagining and uh, thinking uh, about sleep in art. I will try to uh, just briefly un in unpack this later. So, and third hypothesis that uh, I, uh, I also develop in part of my research is, is, uh, is connected with paradoxical reversal of uh, relation of sleep and subjectivity because, uh, because usually we understand subject as an active, uh, uh, acting active uh, entity which acts in the world and so on and so on. Sleep is a exactly interruption of this uh, activity or uh, or this uh, active position. So, but I think that uh, we could describe uh, vice versa, sleep and wakefulness as elementary kind of machine or device of this process of subjectivation. So it was, would be my third hypothesis. I will try also to touch it, but maybe in further discussion, but I would more focus on, on uh, <coughs> this first hypothesis. Uh, so, just to give you some, mm, to give you some basic argument from this part on modernity and sleep. Uh, so um, I would start from several quotes, uh, quotes of uh, from uh, Marx Capital, uh, from chap a a chapter called uh, Working Day, and this chapter Marx argues. Uh, mm, the prolongation of working day beyond the limits of natural day into the night only acts as palliative. It only slightly uh, 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 satisfies the vampire thirst of uh, capital for the living blood of labor. Capitalist production therefore drives by its inherent nature towards appropriation of labor 
throughout the whole 24 hours in the day. Usually, uh, not so much uh, people, uh, not so much researchers pay attention to this quote, but I think that's already uh, at this, uh, how to say, mature Marx reflection on capitalism. We have uh, this moment of, uh, when Marx grasps this moment of incessant uh, uh, functioning of capital. Yeah. So, and uh, in when he starts, uh, when he describes uh, this very beautiful chapter, a working day chapter in Capital, it's because he describes a lot of cases there which connected with sleep and deprivation of sleep. For example, we can find footnotes uh, which somehow repeats my example with Nightclub magazine. <coughs> uh, when uh, he describes a, a factory with uh, uh, female workers who, uh, who are weavers of some textile. And they are exploited like 16 uh, hours uh, per day, or even more, 18, 18 hours. So they were permanently sleepy. In the, uh, and the, there, is a special, there was a special supervisor which permanently uh, goes through this uh, room of the factory with a stick and a little bit uh, biting them, saying, don't sleep, wake up. So for me, it was a very formative uh, moment of this actually moment of so-called primitive accumulation when uh, the violence of capital was very, uh, it was very strong. It was very, uh, how to say, not, not somehow mediated by a resistance of a labor force, by what v later became, uh, how to say, workers' movement, trade unions, and so on. So it was a immediate attack of, of capital on uh, living labor which is sleeping, which uh, is breathing, which is moving, and so on, and to extract more and more profit. So I think it was for, uh, just uh, uh, for a f very important, important uh, thing. Uh, and uh, also, with a lot of metaphors in Marx, you can find uh, com comparing capital with vampire, the figure which was became very prominent in culture of romanticism in 19th century, this, uh, uh, this uh, figure of vampire who attacks during the night, which you are not safe, insecure, and so on and so on. And this all cause could also be linked to this development of uh, uh, capitalist, uh, capitalist form of, uh, of accumulation. So um, to, to go further, uh, uh, we can say that probably later in 20th century, uh, sleep was also somehow uh, included in uh, this, this dispositive of, of control and limitation uh, based on demands of functioning capital itself. So I think it's most fundamental thing for understanding uh, this relation of uh, this politics of control of sleep uh, was uh, uh, this demands or inner drives, how Mark call, Marx call them, of capital accumulation. And uh, uh, later, I think it was a shift in this mechanism because already Marx was describing, for example, this uh, uh, technical problem, how to arrange production without interruption, without, in, how to say, breaks. So he describes how these night shifts, was, uh, they were organized and so on and so on, many mechanisms of organizing incessant production. So I think that primary pro process was uh, organizing incessant functioning of capital itself, not just media, uh, not just, uh, I don't know, social services, things that generally more fundamental level is this, or primary process, connected with sleep was these developments in uh, arrangement of uh, capitalist production. Uh, in this sense, I am very Marxist. Uh, and uh, uh, further, in 20th century, this uh, mechanism of 24 hours uh, production was turned more to practice of consumption, in my view. Because, but you, you know from Grundrisse that when Marx says that uh, consumption, consumption is also a kind of production, of production of consumer. So it's also theoretically uh, based in uh, what was Marx saying in 19th century. So uh, the most of uh, incessant activities like consuming, entertaining, nightlife was shifted uh, to the field of uh, uh, 
consumption and entertainment. So it's also the second stage of developing of this mechanism. Though, of course, the same tendency was uh, somehow uh, kept, uh, preserved in this inner mechanism of capital itself. And, uh, uh, but so, uh, shift was rather that uh, uh, machines, machines uh, uh, which produce uh, uh, this assembly lines uh, which function automatically, it's like a kind of substitute for this lacking capacity of humans not to sleep. So these machines, they are somehow substitute wakeful uh, human functioning. So it was also very important, uh, this technological innovation producing machine which could, can substitute human which are person, uh, which are, uh, uh, how to say, creatures which sleep sometimes. So to, to substitute them with this machinic incessant uh, production. I mean, technological innovation, uh, uh, assembly lines, and so on and so on. So, uh, and uh, it's very symptomatic. It's another, uh, to take another context, uh, there is a, to give you another reference which is absent in what I was writing for this essay, recent essay. It's, I was very curious about one interesting story connected with very beautiful early text of Walter Benjamin called Capitalism as Religion. Probably you know this text. It was quite discussed last time. The, one of the, mm, mm, one of the main theses uh, of Benjamin, who is arguing with uh, another social theorist, Max Weber, about uh, relations of religion, capitalism, and so on and so on, that capitalism is a cultic practice without any interruption. So it was his basic point in this discussion. He described it as a permanent cultic religious activity. So the moment of permanency, incessant, uh, this incessant functioning was very key for Benjamin. Uh, and, uh, one, and at, one, at one place he wrote that uh, mm, capitalism is celebration, celebration of a cult without sans, sans rêve et sans merci, so without uh, sleep or dream, better to say, and without pity, without uh, respite. So it's very, and, and, the, and ed, ed, editors of German edition, they were thinking that it's very strange, uh, a strange uh, uh, mode of expression, what means sun rev, sun, sun, uh, and they put a, a capital T before, sun trev, it means like uh, pity or mercy or so, so, something like this. So they neutralized this uh, Benjaminian insight which was present in his, uh, his, uh, his short text, uh, actually a draft called Capitalism as Religion. So capitalism is, is functioning a celebration of a cult without uh, dream and respite. We should read it this way, I think. So I think it's very important. Uh, so, uh, so capitalism functions sleeplessly, I would say. And, and, and I'm moving, moving uh, more or less to the closing part of what I was going to say and uh, suggest uh, and to, t to take the same uh, process, I'd like to take the same process from a little bit different perspective. Uh, uh, I, uh, um, exactly it was a perspective of non-sleeping power because except of this line of analysis of capitalism, there is a line of, which was also quite, quite powerful, especially in the uh, 20th century, a line of analyzing it in terms of political theology. Uh, you know this, uh, by the way, I, I, it's uh, right, right wing singer Carl Schmidt, or also one of uh, the scholars who was moving in the same direction, uh, his name is Ernst Kantarovich who was, uh, his famous book, uh, uh, Two Bodies, was very important, for example, for Foucault. Foucault refers in Discipline and Punish to this book and so on. And he has also a very interesting note about theological figure, political theological figure, or non-sleeping king, non-sleeping sovereign, which was very, very important for him. Uh, though, of course, it's kind of marginal or in his research about medieval political theology, but he gives uh, s several examples of how uh, 
king or sovereign was represented in all uh, this special text about what should be a king, what, how sh should he behave himself, uh, how should he live. Uh, so uh, rules for noble, I don't know, king or something. It was a very typical genre of medieval literature, by the way, not only in Europe, but also in China, for example. This was special codes for uh, noble uh, rulers or something. Like. And permanent motive in all these codex, uh, on the, all these uh, codes, uh, is uh, that a king should be vigilant. King should uh, not sleep. And uh, Kantarovich gives a very interesting example of uh, from Latin. In Latin, it was uh, uh, codified as rex ex somnis. That means that uh, uh, ex somnis. That means you are like outside of sleep, in space, exterior to sleep. So it was very important figure for medieval political theology, um, as well as for many similar uh, um, discourses about how should a uh, king behave yourself in different contexts. For example, I read some sinologists who also point to this motif in uh, many Chinese texts, uh, you know, Ch China, Chinese empire of medieval ages and later. And in Japan, for example, I, there is also some uh, parts of s such uh, elements of such discourse. So, so king should not sleep. Uh, it's, uh, and, and, uh, and in a different part of my research, which I don't uh, present today, you can find the similar motif already in, uh, in Greek thought in Plato, Laws. He has a, a latest work called Laws, uh, I mean Rules, or uh, there's a kind of a little bit boring, uh, boring uh, work because it consists fully from uh, rules laws, uh, codes for life, how to organize, live, uh, li because in previous uh, big text called Republic, he describes kind of ideology of this uh, living together. But in uh, his latest text, laws, he describes various uh, codes, various rules of uh, ev how life should be organized in uh, this uh, uh, ideal society. And he says that, uh, I just quote by memory, that uh, uh, a sleeping person is even worse than dead because it still can do something, but it doesn't. So uh, wh while sleeping, we are detached from connection with logos, with this rationality. And we have a weak connection just through breathing. We are just breathing. This is the only connection with uh, this external uh, meaningful order. So, f and, and when you are sleeping, you, from one side, you are not in this order of rationality. From other side, you are not governable. When you are sleeping, nobody can govern you, paradoxically. Yes, that, uh, when you are sleeping, you, you cannot be governed. You are fall out uh, f from the structure of political body of society. So I think we can found this uh, metaphysical foundation of this uh, widespread motive of non-sleeping king uh, in origins of uh, European philosophy, Greek thought. So, uh, so it's one very important point. Uh, and another point that, uh, uh, in here I relay on what Foucault was writing and ch on about changing of modern of power in modern societies, when he exactly says about transition from sovereign mode of ruling, of governing, to new one, when he calls in different time as disciplinary power uh, or biopolitics later as a whole systematic mode of governing uh, societies in modernity, which is related to body, discipline, body functions and so on and so on. So in my hypothesis that this model of uh, ancient uh, model of non-sleeping kind was somehow implied in uh, what uh, Foucault was uh, researching and uh, but he doesn't say it about this. And I tried to say it for him. So I think it's very interesting because Foucault was very interesting in topic of being awake actually. And he has... Um, uh, uh, s several texts about small texts in the 60s. He had s some small texts about uh, 
this phenomenon of waking of vigilance, and somehow it was connected with literature because it was uh, one of these was a, rev a review of a German novel uh, being awake and human's night. So being awake while other people are sleeping. So he, Foucault was, though marginally, but he was very interested in this motif of uh, wakefulness or vigilance. So I think that generally uh, this new biopolitical mode of governance with this permanent monitoring, perm permanent uh, uh, surveillance, uh, permanent monitoring and observation of human lives, somehow adopted and generalized this paradigm of a non-sleeping king. So it would be my uh, further development to this. Actually, Foucault himself was working on this uh, uh, because he has a concept of pastoral macht, or pastoral power, it's uh, the power of the priest. And, he, and uh, at one of his later texts, he s uh, described this uh, past, uh, pa power of priest past uh, religious, actually a, re a religious mode of power which was somehow generalized in uh, modern uh, power of observation, control, monitoring, and so on and so on. So uh, uh, in terms of non-sleeping, because the priest should not sleep to monitor or how, how he says, souls of his, uh, uh, how to say, crowd of his, uh, those who are, belong to the same religious community. So I think it's very interesting important uh, for understanding how deprivation of sleep uh, became a paradigm for uh, functioning of modern power. This section. Uh, so, uh, and finally I would like to conclude by maybe again it's kind of new material which I work on now. Um, Sorry for a little bit fragmentary presentation, but I think it could be but because I have a long text and uh, just trying to give you some new things. And the last part, I, I just have recently an interesting uh, experience of rereading. Uh, again, I, I was promising you to, to give you some reference on Lenin. I was recently, during this protest in Russia, I decided to reread a Lenin famous book, State and Revolution, which you probably, some of you, probably know. It is very interesting uh, and dense analysis actually of problem of the state in Marxist thinking. And he uh, refers to texts of Marx and Engels very elegantly and very interestingly and so on. Then actually, finally, it is a book which contains a theory of uh, communism because it, it is a, uh, about thinking how could be uh, society organized in, in non-capitalist way, uh, in, without capitalist bourgeois state. And uh, one very interesting, interesting uh, uh, moment in this text that uh, referring to Engels, uh, Leng says from Engels' Anti-During, you know maybe this uh, important work of Engels of 19th century, that Engels says not about withering away of the state, like it should be disappeared or die off, but Engels says about a state which Einschlaft falls asleep. So it's a very interesting moment for me because I was an English translation, it del it's, uh, how to say, neutralized, uh, neutralizes again this moment because in Russian, Lenin, Lenin clearly says how, it's how, it's how, how, how good, it's a very good word for what I think about what should be, uh, what should happen with the state under communism. It should just fall is, uh, in sleep. And, and, uh, you understand that it should just fall asleep not uh, die, not, uh, how to say, not, uh, not uh, withering away, but it should fall asleep because, uh, and he has very paradoxical, interesting things about this, how this uh, bourgeois state, it's not just he criticized anarchists, we said we just need to abolish the state, that's all. But Lenin says we are, Marxists have different view, we should first, uh, uh, capture and transform power in uh, capitalist society, bourgeois society and then uh, slowly uh, how to make make uh, state disappear but he says he, he uses several times this metaphor of falling asleep 
So for me, it was a very symptomatic in terms of what I said before about power as sleepless, as permanently vigilant activity. So I think this glance or insight of Lenin, which is very, I think, important, could be used in this theory of how we think power and how we uh, can think its uh, neutralization and its uh, abol abolishing or it should somehow fall asleep in a way. This power which was formed uh, during very important pro uh, processes of cap capitalist modernity. But of course nobody, I don't know, uh, though I'm, I'm part of the group what is to be done, I don't know how, how to do it. Uh, so I, I would stop at this moment and if you like I can show you maybe several pictures and comment them. This is a, uh, it, this is a part of series of pictures, because I just more entertaining part, I just show you several in comments, several random pictures which I like, just uh, not just very well, well organized presentation, uh, but just uh, for relief uh, and so on. This is a picture made uh, from, by an artist who belongs to our group, his name is Nikolai Alenikov and it's uh, called uh, 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 is worker asleep? Question mark. So it it is a picture of a worker uh, uh, who is lying in this. You see this space. It was a former factory in one of the Russian cities. And paradoxically, it refers to historical experience of first Russian revolution because exactly in this space it was more, more one of the most strongest strongest clashes of working class people with police. So in he, as if he questions uh, this space uh, through the figure of sleeping worker about uh, his political potentialities, political cap capacities. So it's one of the, the, the another representation of, uh, representation of sleep which was connected with the figure of guillotine. I will show you, it's just a project. Uh, I like this young uh, punk style artist who is also from my... So he combined sleeping bed uh, with uh, a figure of guillotine which means that you somehow you are uh, going to sleep safe and permanently thinking about uh, how to say, he played with this contrast of sleep and uh, and uh, as a state of repose, uh, rest, uh, and, and so on and so on. And this strange mechanism which uh, was connected exactly with cutting head of the sovereign who, are, who is not sleeping. Yes. So it's, for me it was also very interesting uh, motive. So, so it, there, there is several pictures uh, like, uh, like, uh, like this. Um, probably I should move. Uh, and uh, finally, so sorry, it's very bad presentation of, of, of picture, pictures. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so, okay, but, uh, okay. Oh, I have also classical. Some there is, you know, there is a very nice album. Uh, album uh, of uh, it's, it's full of uh, album which was produced by two scholars who are. Uh, traced uh, uh, the visual representation of sleep in classical art, but I think it's not so much fits to this presentation. But, but I finally would like to, to show you not art. It is uh, what I found uh, by, by randomly just uh, on Facebook or something which was connected with uh, what I said about local context, this uh, anti-Putin protest and so on. Somebody did a, a very strange uh, representation of Putin because it was a lot of satirical, critical representation of Putin. But see, here you see just uh, uh, that uh, he sleeps like in, uh, uh, in very special mode of being sleeping well but, uh, and not worried or not uh, care, taking care about everything. So I think in a way, but probably it's not easy to universalize this, uh, this uh, to explain the meaning, but I think it was in a way very interesting for me in context of research, research of uh, to see how this picture uh, uh, expressed the desire of people 
desire of those who was protesting uh, that this uh, f uh, sovereign, this, uh, this uh, how to say, or almost dictator, get sleep, finally get sleep. So I think it's for, for uh, in not just in terms of physical protest, uh, pro process of uh, laying uh, to the bed, but in a way it was somehow utopian representation of paradoxical representation of this protest. Because of course I said that it's quite di distant from, uh, from, uh, from uh, politics, but in a way, it, uh, in my interpretation, it somehow represents this desire to uh, desire address to power that it, how to say, not just withering away or die of that, but at least to, to, to sleep on. <laughs> so I, I don't know, maybe I'm taking two more time and we could uh, switch to several questions or uh, answers. Uh. Um, I will. I will try to f to find uh, something. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to find. Okay. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, ah, I like this one. For example, uh, if you, it's very playful. Uh, it's also random. Random uh, because it was uh, somehow private property, which. Uh, uh, with this warning against that you should not sleep here, not camp here, not uh, do anything, uh, and especially no, non, not sleep at this place. So I think it, for me it was also somehow representative about these policies uh, around sleep, which I connected with modernity, capitalism, uh, bio, bio power, and so on and so on. So probably I can show you. Uh, no, of course you know Mladen Stilinovich work. Uh, it's, 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 you know, but you, I, I turn, uh, it, of course it was a very uh, yes, important uh, work of uh, 70s uh, of uh, uh, Yugoslavian conceptualist artist Mladen, St Mladen Stilinovich, who a conceptualist who produced this uh, paradoxical image artist at work. Which, uh, you can see just the artist who is sleeping, but it refers both to this uh, a famous surrealist uh, who was saying that, uh, sorry, I am uh, not sleeping, I am working, uh, and also to the general status of his criticism of this uh, has the business style of, uh, actually it was uh, emergence of neoliberalism already in the 70s, so it was a kind of anticipation and protest to this hyperactivated society which uh, doesn't, uh, how to say, has uh, any, position for sleep. So, um, also, uh, you know, sleeping. Uh, so, ah, this one. And there is, was a lot of performances, uh, but it was already performances of various artists with experimenting in s with sleeping in uh, opening of vernissage, for example, or in gallery, in many, many things like this. So, it's uh, things not so much interesting. Here is, uh, uh, here is, uh, um, uh, also historical part because uh, I remember that you found for this reader for the seminar this project Melnikov. If you like, we can see some pictures from Melnikov project. Uh, project, yes. It was uh, an idea. Uh, okay, I'll show. Ah, uh, no, not this, but this. Not more representative. I think this. So uh, Melnikov was. Uh, uh, Quite, of course, many of you know him because it's quite important architect of 20th century. He was a kind of uh, bor uh, born in discussion or avant-garde experiments of uh, uh, of uh, uh, 20s post-revolutionary years after October Revolution in Russia. So he was uh, uh, a very important figure who. Um, famous by s m several buildings, exhibitions, and so on, but he has a lot of non-realized, not realized project. Uh, he was so-called paper architect sometimes, especially in the second half of his life, uh, and he was uh, mm, uh, projecting a, sp sp a, a enormous, uh, strange, fantastic pro project c called uh, Sleepy Sonata, or s uh, Sonata of Sleep. It was connected with the idea of uh, perfect sleep for workers. Uh, and he produced the whole, uh, I will show it, uh, probably better this, uh, not this. Ah, this, this one is just archi architectural 
architectural uh, draft uh, of, of this picture of this projected building, which was never realized. So we see here a, a kind of me membrane or this uh, rat ra uh, circle, uh, rotonda structure uh, like this. It was designed for collective sleep of workers. So you can imagine that in late uh, uh, 20s, beginning of 30s, was such strange biopolitical experiments. Because if we could also distinguish biopower as oppressive mechanism of discipline and so on, and what do people following Foucault like uh, uh, Negri or Judith Revelle think about that biopolitics is a way of resistance, it's a difference. So we can, could also use this distinction. So it was not uh, biopower as instrument of control, but rather experiment in biopolitics is producing some different forms of living together or forms of life. So the idea was that uh, people are in these small cells, you see it, I tried to show uh, on the, and uh, workers are sleeping there. And this membrane is shaking. It's like a cr cradle, how it's called, this for, uh, for children, this uh, uh, something to put them asleep. Uh, and uh, also, uh, he suggested to use some smells, uh, some music to produce this absolute uh, hyper perfect wealthy sleep. Yeah. So, and this, there is, a, I'm not sure that anybody read this paper from Reader, uh, who was given, uh, sent to us for the seminar, but, yeah, probably not, not, not many people, but it was a friend, there is a friend of mine, Tony Wood, who wrote, uh, described this case of Melnikov. Uh, but I, I am a little bit disagree with him, and in terms of uh, interpretation of this work, because for him it was just a sleep as metaphor, so it was revolution and awakening of people, and after evil Stalin came and everybody was going to sleep, and he reflected this historical moment of transition from uh, early revolutionary project uh, uh, to after Stalin, Stalin's dream or Stalin's sleep. Uh, for me, it's more interesting to think about this uh, in terms of uh, um, in terms of uh, um, what I tried to show before, Actually, uh, this one, because it's again connected with Lenin. You see, uh, you see at this picture the project or some drawings or graphics from a project of Melnikov, which was connected uh, with first mausoleum of Lenin. So he was a const uh, c constructor or architect of first Lenin mausoleum, actually. Uh, and it was made from wood, that probably my friend Tony Wood was uh, very interested in, 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 in this case. But, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, this was the uh, idea of putting Lenin in kind of sarcophag, uh, which was made from uh, glass and crystals. So it was also, but, but Sarkafak was not realized, but he built wooden mausoleum, which was standing like several years, and it was uh, substituted for what we saw now, see now on, uh, in Moscow in Red Square, this Lenin mausoleum. And uh, it was a very interesting experience because this time, biographically, uh, this uh, mm, Melnikov uh, was get a task to build, uh, construct this wooden mausoleum like for two weeks or something like this. So he was abs wasn't sleeping at all different this time. So for him, it was a very ambivalent experience. From one side, he was not sleeping this period of time, permanently working on this project. From other side, he prepared a place for kind of eternal sleep of Lenin. So it was, uh, you see how, uh, Interesting, this this combination is so so. And prototype of his discourse about uh, sleep architecture, how sleep is healing, or how how it's wealthy. I think was this formative biographical experience connected with the death of uh, leader of the revolu revolution. Very important task to somehow to preserve his uh, against not for dying, but for kind of eternal sleep. So I think it's, <laughs> it's playful, but uh, I mean this, this could be a point for, for thinking and, and, and about this. So it's a quite interesting project too. But do you, some of you have this uh, PDF with uh, this paper about Melnikov? 
So if you like more, I don't know. Uh, this this is uh, young artist sleeping in gallery, Stilinovich. It's again young artist sleeping. In it. So it's very typical. Everybody now sleeps in gallery. Uh, not not some something. So, so, so not specific. So okay, I, I would prefer to stop here. So yeah. So but maybe very very improvising. Improvising, but 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 just to yeah yeah. So. Thanks for your attention. Yeah. 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 Yeah.